Hi, and welcome to the second section in learning Lodash, which is working with a list of recipes. In the previous section, we introduced Lodash along with our sample application. We installed the necessary dependencies to develop our application and installed Lodash. In this section, we will begin working with the Lodash Collections API to display a list of recipes. After building the list of recipes, we will build an input that filters the list by a username. Then we will write a transformation that will display the total number of recipes for each tag. Finally, we'll create a search box that will run a basic text search for recipes. Now we move on to the first video of this section, where we will build a list of recipes to display as a landing page for the user. In this video, you will be introduced to the Lodash Collections API through one of its more common iterators. You'll also get a first look at how components will be structured within our client-side application. In this video, we are going to start by looking at our API endpoint for returning a list of recipes. We'll build upon our API using the Lodash Collections API and its ForEach method. Then we will take a look at the recipe card component that we will use to display recipe data on the front end. The recipe card is just one type of component that we will create for our application, and all our components will share some common methods. We'll review those common component methods and create a new recipe list component that will generate recipe cards for each recipe in our list. To get a list of recipes for display, we first need to create an API endpoint for retrieving the list. Our recipes API already has this endpoint set up for us. What we're going to do is enhance this endpoint with the ability to expand relationships that are defined in the recipes data structure. First, we'll CD into the recipes API repo. Then we'll run git checkout video-2-1 to get the code we need to follow along with the video. After you have checked out the code branch for the video, run npm install to fetch the required node modules for the API. In your code editor, open up routes slash recipes slash index.js. This file contains the route required to get a list of recipes. Next, from the root of your recipes API repo, run npm run start to start the Express API server. In your browser, go to http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 3000 slash recipes. In my browser, I am using a Chrome extension called JSON view to view the API responses in a readable format. I recommend installing either JSON View or another JSON formatter if you have trouble viewing the responses in your browser. On your screen you will find a list of recipes, each with some information about the recipe, including the ID of the user that created the recipe. This ID won't be as useful to the client as the actual user information, so we'll edit routes slash recipes slash index.js to display the user info. Lodash provides a collections API with methods to iterate over and manipulate a JavaScript array or object. We'll use the foreach method in Lodash to execute a function on each recipe that is returned from our data store and load the associated user data for each recipe. To do that, first include Lodash in the route using require. We're going to look for a query string parameter on this endpoint called underscore expand which indicates a field in each recipe that is linked to additional data in our data store. If we have a value for underscore expand, we're going to load the associated list from the data store. Then we'll iterate over each recipe using for each, find the data record for the ID supplied, and create a recipe property with that expanded record. Now that we've added the expand parameter from the command line, press Ctrl plus C to kill our express server, and then run npm run start to restart the server. In the browser, load http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 3000 slash recipes question mark underscore expand equals user. Notice how we have a user property in our data that includes a username. Now let's turn our attention to the recipes client repo. First, cd into the recipes client repo and run git checkout video-2-1 
to get the code required to complete this video. Once you are checked out to the video 2-1 branch, open package.json in your code editor. We have added a couple more dependencies here that would be good to understand. The whatwg fetch dependency is a polyfill for the window.fetch API that is provided in certain browsers. We'll use window.fetch to make Ajax calls to our recipes API. The next is ES6 Promise. We install this as a polyfill for the new JavaScript Promises API that is used by window.fetch. The final dependency is required for development only. It is a browserify transform called Stringify that provides the ability to import templates using require. This transform is now also added to the npm run dev and npm run build commands. From the command line, run npm install to get these dependencies. Once npm install is complete, let's open our base component file at app slash components slash base slash index.js. This basic component system will be expanded upon later in our video course, but right now it contains properties shared by most components. That includes an HTML element that is the root of the component, similar to how other JavaScript frameworks encapsulate the DOM. There is also a template that can be compiled by Lodash that is used to render data from our API to the DOM. We'll dig more into templates in a later video section. We also have methods to append and remove elements within a component, and a render method that is used to render the component into the DOM. Now let's look at our recipe card component at app slash components slash recipes slash card slash index dot js. This component has no functionality yet, but contains a basic template it will render at app slash components slash recipes slash card slash template dot html. This template simply requires a data object that contains title, description, and user properties to render. This is the component instance that we will create from within our recipe list. To create our recipe list component, let's create a new directory at app slash components slash recipes slash list. Within this directory, create a file called index.js. This will be our component definition. In this file, we want to first require the base component we want to extend and the recipe card component we'll use to populate the list. We also want to require two Lodash methods, create and for each. The create method is used to create a new object prototype from a given blueprint, in this case, our base component. We'll cover this more in section four, but right now it's important to understand that this gives us access to the properties and methods we saw previously when reviewing the base component. As in our API, for each will be used to iterate the list of recipes that we get back from the API. In this component, we first want to create a constructor for the recipe list that we'll call the base component constructor. Then we will use create to inherit from the base component prototype and add in our new constructor. Finally, we will override the base component render method to call window.fetch on the API endpoint created earlier. The return of window.fetch is a response object, which we must first convert into a JavaScript object using response.json. Using the promise return from window.fetch and response.json, we iterate the JavaScript object using foreach. In the callback pass to foreach, we create a new recipe card instance for each recipe. We are creating the element to render the card within this iterator since it does not already exist in our index file. We then call render on the card, passing in our recipe data and append the card's element to our list. Once the recipe list component is created, add the component to module.exports and then save the file. From the command line in the recipes client repo, run npm run build to build the compiled JavaScript assets for the components that we just built. Then run npm run start to start the static file server to serve up our application. 
Load the application in your browser at http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 9000. You will see that each recipe retrieved from the API is now displayed in a card format that we can add upon in later videos. This video covered a lot of new concepts within our code base, and now we have laid the groundwork to write even more components for our recipes application. We created an API endpoint that returns a list of recipes and optionally adds the user that created each recipe using low dashes for each method. We reviewed the base component and recipe card component that we'll use throughout the tutorials, and we created a recipe list component that uses low dashes for each method to create recipe cards for display. Great work! These are your first steps to mastering Lodash.